starting yeah now all righty ready to kick things off welcome. yeah sure welcome <laughs> people. of course joshua here along with slavin that's me <laughs> slavin is what i call him yeah that's that's rhymes it sounds pretty good yeah <laughs> <laughs> Boxing Haven Slavin. Yeah, you know, we're going to have to keep that one up. So, yeah, uh, so we gather here today to discuss a few things. You know, we want to give you a mix of uh, both the history as well as touch on a couple of things that are going here in the present time. Uh, and as a part of that, we want to do a decade discussion, and that will be boxing in the 2000s. So we'd be looking from 2000 through 2009 and going over some of the biggest fights that happened there. Some of the best fights, uh, some of them will be known commodities. Uh, then you'll have those that were just excellent uh, contests and matchup that made people uh, names, at least in boxing circles. So we'll definitely uh, get to that. Um, first off, I guess, uh, Slavin, you, we can discuss that big news as far as Canelo Alvarez uh, and, and yeah. what he's doing here in the near term and future. Yeah, that's pretty exciting news. You know, uh, I think this is a fight that might be uh, very, or if not, maybe so exciting, but at least interesting because uh, Saunders is, uh, of course, unbeaten for first and uh, he's a rather clever rather tricky fighter I guess uh, and a tough guy too so I don't think it will be an easy task for Canelo even though I, I of course you must favor him to win <laughs> All so, right. uh, yeah, if yeah yeah for those that don't know Canelo Alvarez is currently scheduled to face Avini Yildrim or Yidrim. Oh yeah, Yildrim, yeah. Yeah, it's his mandatory and it's a fight that many people think uh, Canelo Alvarez is going to win. Canelo Alvarez himself, even though he says he's not looking past the opponent, he expects to win for sure. It's he, <laughs> Just being nice. <laughs> yeah, he scheduled a, a fight with Billy Joe Saunders thereafter and uh, for those that might not know Yildrim, his probably highest profile fight came at the hands of being uh, stopped by uh, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. 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 Chris Eubank Jr. stopped him, and uh, it was in an impressive fashion, actually, is, is one yeah. of the knockouts at that particular time. I think this might have been like 2017 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think so, yeah, 17, somewhere in the Super fall. Six, yeah. or, uh, no, not the Super Six, but the World Boxing Super Series, rather, uh, yeah. that had the, the inaugural tournament for the super middleweights. And neither has really done much since, Dubanks included, but uh, now Yildrim is getting this opportunity. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. But of course, the Billy Joe Saunders fight is the one that everyone wants to see. Uh, now, do you think, how do you feel about Billy Joe Saunders' last few performances? Did he, did he uh, answer any critics with his uh, last win over the aging veteran but always game Martin Murray? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, he was very dominant. I, I mean, <laughs> that's all I can say pretty much. It was not a really, you know, uh, well, it's not such an impressive performance because Murray was already, you know, I believe 39 and over the hill and all that. But uh, he was really in charge all the way. So, I mean, Murray kept kept coming, but he couldn't really amount anything special. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was, you can call it pretty good uh not very impressive uh yeah mm -hmm. i mean he's just a guy who who knows how to box and uh he's a tough guy maybe not such a hard hit hitter but yeah yeah so 
So yeah, my uh, take is uh, definitely stylistically Billy Joe Saunders. He is poised to give Canelo problems for as long as he, well, as long as the fight lasts. Um, and you know, I think conventional wisdom would uh, pre uh, presume that uh, or assume that uh, Billy Joe Saunders goes the distance with Canelo, just given his defense and his knack for being able to avoid getting into huge exchanges. Um, I do question, you know, I, I just wonder, I, I wonder what what version of Billy Joe Saunders is going to sort of crop up and, and maybe what version isn't the word, but we think about Billy Joe Saunders and his best performance. And I think everyone will likely go to the Eubank fight or his performance against David Lemieux, who was another big puncher who many thought was actually going to uh, defeat uh, Billy Joe Saunders at the time that they yeah. had fought. But that was, uh, you know, more than a few years ago at this point, and he had been inactive and, just based on the momentum he had coming off of uh, that Lemieux fight, which was the latter of the big fights that he was involved in. So it'll be interesting to see if Billy Joe Saunders still has that same juice that he had when he was – really at the very top of his game and looked like uh, he could take on anyone from 160 up and, and give them absolute problems. Yeah, that's true. I would also add the Andy Lee fight. Oh, yeah, which, yeah. Which was when he took the WBO middleweight title because uh, Andy Lee was actually, you know, one of the, the, the better middleweights at the time. And yeah, yeah. I, I always like Andy. He could punch. Yeah. Dude. And he stopped uh, Matt Corbo before that. So, oh, okay, it was a fight I saw live, and I remember. I mean, uh, Saunders set him down twice. I think in the third round, then Lee kind of came back afterwards. But uh, it was rather impressive that Saunders, you know, managed to put him down twice. And oh yeah, and, uh, yeah had to... he been more of a puncher, I think he would have stopped him probably. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think back on it. I'm sure I've seen that. I'm, I'm trying to relive the details here in my head. But um, yeah, that was uh, probably, uh, I presume, Andy Lee in one of his uh, last hurrahs, I guess you could say. Yeah. He was, he was, but I always enjoyed uh, watching Andy Lee. He, he was good fundamental. Yeah, he, he was. He punched out of nowhere. Exciting, yeah. Exciting guy, hard hitter. And yeah. Definitely. All right, cool. So, um, so, so, yeah, th that that fight is going to be interesting. Then, and I think uh, we're both looking forward to that action. And from what I gathered, Canelo is looking to do a third fight as well in 2021, and he's intent on unifying the well, becoming the undisputed uh, middleweight champion. Actually, so yeah. I was trying to think back. As far as the belts, that would mean he would have to end up taking on Caleb Plant, assuming all goes well. I believe that's it, right? Uh, Caleb Plant will have the sole belt that he needs to unit to become undisputed after he, or assuming he uh, gets past Billy Joe Saunders and Yildrim. Yeah. Is that correct, right? Uh, or who else? Have, does anyone else have anything at 168? Mm. I'm trying to think. I can't remember right now. Uh, but I think that's the case. I think uh Yeah. He he got he got the belt from Liam Smith. He already had a belt yeah. from uh Rocky Fielding. Um mm. so he's got the yeah, that would be Billy Joe Saunders has one, right? And yeah. Then Caleb Plant. The third, yeah. That's a major yeah. belts, yeah. Yeah, so so uh, and uh, speaking of that, matter of fact, uh, Caleb Plant just fought last night. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see yeah. it, but it was uh, well, unfortunately not yet. But uh, I will. I think I will. I will get a hold of. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, um, definitely not something uh, you have to rush into. You know, you can just yeah. watch it these days, and uh, you're just like, huh, you know, I want to see a Caleb Plant fight because. <laughs> It was as expected as far as him cruising. I actually uh, thought that he was going to get True Outs out of there, and he was he was close to it, to be honest with you. But we know True Outs is a tough, uh, wily veteran. He, he's been in the ring with a lot of top guys, and he, mm. he has a knack for hanging around for sure. And it was really a matter of 
skill, uh, the level of skill that Clint has was uh, just uh, uh, above what uh, Truops could offer because he was he was he landed he landed a few decent punches in the fight in itself uh, over the course of it, but uh, oh. Plant was never in trouble whatsoever, and and he really shined as far as. You know, he was getting good promo, and this was uh, an opportunity to uh, display his skills. Of course, he didn't get the knockout that would have, you know, wild fans a bit more. But he was, he was dominant, and and really, I guess now that I think about it, um, kind of give or take what people would think of the think of the performance. Uh, say you're new. Uh, even more on the casual side of boxing, just kind of tuning in to see such a dominant yeah. performance you can either take it one way like hey this guy is really good Caleb Clint or the guy he was facing was not good you know but uh I want to give Truax the benefit of the doubt he is a fairly decent yeah. fighter and former world champion yeah, definitely he 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 can box he's not some crude guy I mean crude fighter so he has upset the, the Gale once and uh mm -hmm. a couple other guys yeah yeah, that was an exciting fashion as well. That was a good fight. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I saw that fight actually also live. Oh, it yeah. was in England. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, uh, Chunky, or is that his name? Chunky. Chunky. <laughs> <laughs> James DeGale. Yeah, okay. I don't know where that nickname came from, but <laughs> <laughs> he certainly doesn't look chunky. <laughs> yeah, that is funny, but um. So yeah, so Caleb Plant Canelo potential future. Yeah, uh, right. there's, there, I, I say online, there's a lot of chatter uh, about it, you know. And you have people who who think that uh, Caleb has the tools to pull it off uh, over uh, Canelo, who is pretty much uh, on top of his game to the point where, of course, me along with uh, many others think he's the top boxer in the world right now, and mm. it's gonna take. A hell of a performance to be able to dethrone him and, and that's going to have to yeah. come on the boxing game or if you had someone and, and i don't see one anyone right now who is that sort of brute puncher that will well besides uh Arthur better be uh, but uh yeah. that's, what, that's <laughs> what i wanted to say i mean right now the only way i see canelo losing if he went up again and fought someone like better be because yeah. I don't know if Plant can do it. I, I can see Plant really giving him a hard fight, you know. Yeah. Fight, but, uh, you know, the thing with the judges, <laughs> the Canelo always got him on his side. And then, you know, you really have to be dominant to beat him on points. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't think Caleb Plant is that good, I mean, to be so, so yeah. dominant. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. I think that, uh, yeah, for just thinking about the matchup in itself, uh, it might, it, it has the potential of uh, being one of those fights that is so tactical that you don't really get a ton of uh, sustained action. It has that potential for sure. Yeah. Um, it'll depend on sort of how. Uh, Canelo approaches the fight, I believe, you know, if he comes out with uh, hell intent in a similar fashion that he did with uh, uh, Liam Smith, um, then, of course, it's going to be a tough night for, uh, for, um, for uh, Plant. But also, by that same token, I think defensively, uh, Plant is a very different fighter than uh, Liam Smith, for sure. So, you know, okay. I'm going to have trouble catching, uh, catching yeah. at times. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think both Saunders and uh, Plant should give Canelo more uh, trouble than uh, Alan Smith did. Yeah. Cool. Mm. All right. Shall we start with the. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Got to get into it. <clears throat> As we mentioned, uh, decade discussion, boxing in the 2000s. And for full transparency, those to, to everyone, we're basically going to go through the list that went by Wikipedia. And they have a list there already compiled for us. So we're just going to go through and talk about some of those notable fights that are that are available or that took place at least uh, over the course of 2000 through 2000 and 
nine. So with that, we can jump straight into it. And I guess I can uh, kick things off with the first fight, which is the first that is on this listing. As a matter of fact, that would be Eric Morales in, I believe that first fight with the great, the great Eric Morales, El Terrible with the great Marco Antonio Barrera, uh, OMAB. And this was to unify the WBO, WBC Super Bantamweight title. It ended up being Ring's fight of the year. And Slavin, I remember that it was just an exciting fight. And these two, as far as two Mexican warriors, they had uh, bad blood, it seems. It was, it was a grudge match, grudge match yeah. uh, in some senses. And I think that, I, and I don't know if it's, if it may still be the case now. I think that they just genuinely didn't like each other. And that uh, spilled over into the fight. And the uh, viewing public was treated to an excellent fight that is one of the best fights of the decade. Uh, that That is for sure. And it kicked off in February of 2000. So they started off the year with a bang. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I've seen that fight uh, against, I guess, a couple of times. And uh, as, uh, it was, of course, amazing. I mean, just non-stop action. And, uh, yeah, there was definitely a bad blood between the two. I, I'm not sure. I, I just seen a clip where uh, at this, I don't know if it was before the first fight, but uh, they got into some sort of a scuffle before the fight. And <laughs> yeah, I know it. Went, like, uh, I, yeah, I can't remember if it's. Barrera the... slapped Morales first, and I think Morales said to him, "You are nothing," something like that. Yeah. <laughs> slap, then he charged at Barrera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the clip you're talking about. That was uh, pretty. Yeah. Funny. So it was like uh, Morales, you know, the, the poor boy from uh, Tijuana versus the. Barrera, who was like a rich boy from from mm. Mexico City, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I I scored that fight once, but I would like to watch it again to score it because I had it even, you know, one thirteen, one thirteen. I Matter of fact, I'm gonna check my little fight score app. Fight score, that's an app. Uh, they don't sponsor us or anything, yeah. but so, uh, it's a good <laughs> a good little app. You know, you can go in there and track a fight right. and score a fight and it's kind of saves the history. I'm going to see if I actually have that one scored going back because uh, it's always good to kind of check those out. Uh, yeah, so uh, Morales was down, but it was not really a big uh, knockdown. He was just kind of almost a slip in the 11th round or something. No, uh, yeah. So, so, you know, Barrera fans are like, oh, he knocked Morales down and still didn't get the victory, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of how it goes, especially when you have uh, some diehard fans who are on your side uh, or who really believe in a particular fighter. Yeah, I guess I don't have that one score. But, um, but yeah, yeah, there's this. And, you know, it could be the simplest of things, especially when it's a close fight and you're getting sustained action like that. Uh, no one's ever going to truly be satisfied with the uh, – uh, the yeah, assuming they were a fan of uh, Barrera, and then of course the Morales fans are gonna always uh, feel that uh, he won as well. Um, so yeah, yeah. I had to go back and uh, score that as well. Uh, uh, now that I think about it, I want to I want to take a look back at it because it's, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah. So you just had a, someone attempting to call me. <laughs> oh, or, oh, good. Yeah. You're a busy man. Yeah, <laughs> no, not really, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, uh, yeah, where were we? Barrera Morales, yeah. Barrera Morales, that was the first one. I'll let you pick the next one, yeah, on the list. The next Never one, know. let me find it. I think I, uh, just a second. Wow, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Uh -huh. So the next one was the Felix Trinidad versus, or Felix, as we say, where he comes from, against David Reed, which was for a WBA light middleweight title in March. Yeah, yeah, I remember that fight, but but I'm trying to recall if I, I've just seen highlights or if I actually seen the whole fight. Uh, I know that David Reed, he was a tough fighter. He might have been undefeated at that time. Um, 
I can't recall, but uh, of course, uh, Phillips Trinidad, you know, he was on top of his game. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, before he ended up taking on uh, Bernard Hopkins in 2001, which I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, but yeah, I, I just remember uh, faint highlights of the fight. Um, I don't remember anything uh, glaringly um, memorable or, or, or just just in the fight in itself. So it's kind of hard for me to recall. What do you, what do you think? Do you recall uh, any any uh, <laughs> tidbits associated with that fight? Yeah, I've seen it. I mean, a couple of times too, and uh, I remember the Reed was doing well uh, in the early going. I think he scored a knockdown in one, of, maybe round three, and then okay. after, I think round six that that Trinidad really started, you know, coming on, and <laughs> he scored several knock knockdowns, but couldn't get. Read out of there, which was quite amazing because he really, you know, put a lay a beating on Reed, but Reed was so tough and uh, he just lasted the distance. And yeah, it was a very, very brave loss for Reed. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and uh, for sure check that out. Um, it was a very good fight, yeah, very good. And did he, uh, Kind of, did he do anything else after that, David Reed? Because I remember his name being there. I remember this fight, and then I don't know if it was after this fight where he kind of faded away a bit. I don't know, really. Yeah, maybe he had one more fight. I'm not sure. Not so many. Definitely. I'm gonna. Yeah. That is then David freaking Reed. He was a uh, yeah a gold. Uh, Olympic gold medalist. So yeah, he only had uh, looks like nineteen fights. So he only had nineteen fights in his career. Yeah. So I'm um, I presume that yeah he didn't do a ton after that. Um, so yeah, they listed uh, Trinidad bout and uh, uh, so he ended up uh, suffering. Uh, uh, looks like a. Uh, Detached retina or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, probably. And I yes. guess that may have been what is what. Uh... Well, that's what many. Yeah, that's what ended many boxers' career uh, careers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, it looks like this mentions that the detached uh, retina affected him for the remainder of his career. Oh, yeah. Fairly short. I I, just, I do remember because I remember. He, he was like there and then all of a sudden he was kind of just gone from uh, the picture in some sense. Yeah, he was kind of a new star on the rise, but uh, Trinidad just kind of uh, and extinguished his star. All right. So, yeah. All right. Cool. So let me, uh, so I'm going to move ahead a bit to June of 2000, uh, where on June 17th, the first of the matchup between Sugar Shane Mosley and Oscar the Golden Boy De La Hoya. Uh, and that, of course, was an exciting fight. Both of these fighters were relatively in their primes, uh, for the most part, uh, during this actual uh, matchup. Uh, this was for the WBC welterweight title. So I guess you could say they were in their primes. Uh, some would argue that both were that, or had their best years at lightweight. But that aside, they were still primed. And, and this was a big fight. Uh, and it brought out a lot of stars. I think it may have taken place at the uh, Staples Center. Could be wrong between the three fights. But I, I'm thinking it was at the uh, Staples Center or something of that nature. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, they both were California guys. So... Yeah. Uh, that fight, you know, I watched it not too long ago. Well, it would have been 2020. Um, I watched the uh, three fight series between them, which of course we'll get to. And hey, they were uh, excellent fights. Matter of fact, I'm going to see how I, I know if I should have that in here as far as how I scored those two fights because it wasn't super long ago. Or those three fights, or let me see this yeah, first. Sure. First fight was better than the second because uh, Mosley was not so good in the, the second fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Bill yeah. somehow got got the decision in the end, which I thought was not so fair. So yeah, I'm looking at how I scored it, and I'm pretty sure this is the first that had it 116, 112 in favor of Mosley. Um, wow. <laughs> and, and that was with a great performance from uh, Oscar De La Hoya as well. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, let me see. Well, I haven't really scored it. I, I think I only seen the whole fight once, uh, but that wasn't so long ago. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I gave uh, Mowgli uh, the bulk of the early rounds in the last four rounds. I felt uh, it, Oscar had a knack for at times uh, kind of stepping off the gas at the tail end of some of those big fights. Of course, we, we saw that. And of course, that plagued him in the fight with uh, Trinidad as well, where he stepped off the gas. And it was a similar case, I believe, just when I was uh, going through this fight, I was giving Shane Mosley uh, some of those later rounds. Uh, and and I think that is what ultimately got him the uh, W. But I did score it for him. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, that too, uh, I guess it was a speed of Mosley that was kind of also yeah. a factor uh, because uh, I don't know, the uh, way I hadn't really fought that many for fighters that were so fast. And, uh, yeah, yeah, speed and athleticism for sure. Mosley, yeah. you, you could tell that uh, athletically uh, he was uh, very gifted. You yeah. know, uh, uh, I, I just have to bring this up. <laughs> I was actually watching <laughs> a couple of days ago. It's so funny. Uh, these little interviews with, uh, it's called In Depth with Graham something. Uh, he was talking to that Victor Conti guy who was over oh, yeah. at Alto, who now is over the snack stuff. And I can't help with the fact that he was mentioning that uh, Shane Mosley was one of his clients in. Oh, he yeah, thinks right. that uh, the use of what they were calling EPO and Mosley says unknowingly is what allowed him to come on in the later rounds. So I think it was before this fight, this very first fight. So this was 2000. Oh, wow. And yeah. uh, I definitely just, and now I, I don't know, you know, of course, <laughs> it's, it's all, uh, I guess, alleged. And But his name was on some documentation, documentation apparently. But whether that necessarily fueled him to, you know, win those later rounds of this fight is, of course, is subjective. You had to see who, who scored it. Some could have scored some of those later fights, or later rounds for De La Hoya. But I just found it very interesting, and I had to bring it up because I was just watching this, like, a couple of days ago. Yeah, I, all I know, I read about mostly, you know, taking some uh, steroids when he was fighting Winky Wright, so in that... Oh, I yeah. In that whole... That was at 154. Period. Yeah, oh, 2004, yeah. three or four, it was then that he was supposed to you know, have started. Using. Well, it didn't help him. <laughs> yeah, it didn't help him in this fight, definitely. <laughs> That's what he... The same with uh, Fernando Vargas. He was on steroids and he fought De La Hoya. He still got his ass kicked in the end, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of my uh, favorite De La Hoya fights right there. It was like, yeah. uh, it was like a sweet uh, victory for De La Hoya. Yeah. So, I was such a big De La Hoya fan back. I mean, I'm still a fan, of course, but I was really a big fan when I was like 30 years so old or something. So I couldn't really watch. Uh, the fights that he lost, I only saw them once, and then I couldn't watch them again. It was like <laughs> too much for me, you know, to yeah. watch like all those uh, Mosley, Bernard Hopkins, and uh, Felix Stein. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, he was always willing to test himself. I give him that. So yeah, uh, he, yeah he's one of the uh, an exciting fighter that I like to watch as well. One of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, he was a true star, a complete fighter, and yeah, yeah, simply, yeah, yeah and, and not to go on a tangent, but that's what gets on my nerves in this whole uh Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford saga. These Spence fans 
who are apparently management and negotiators for Spence apparently on Facebook. Uh, they keep bringing up how Spence is a big pay-per-view star or a bigger pay-per-view star than Crawford. And I think that is BS. And yeah. when you talk about pay-per-view stars, the only pay-per-view star in boxing right now is, is uh, I guess you can throw Tyson Fury in that mix too, but Anthony Joshua, Canelo Alvarez, I guess you can say uh, Tyson Fury and really thinking about it outside of that, unless Mayweather is coming out of retirement to do some yeah. exhibition or something, nobody is pulling in the type of numbers to be claiming that they're some big pay-per-view star or they're some cash cow. There's yeah. a difference, you know, Mike Tyson, he's a big pay-per-view star apparently still, even after all these years off. Yeah, so I mean, especially those weights, uh, like 147 and below, it's only been the very biggest stars that have been, you know, pay per view, like, yeah, uh, yeah, kings <laughs> to put that way. I think, like, it, yeah, know, Spence oh, just well. had the right matchups with uh, the good counterpart that allowed him to sell a little bit better, and just because. I know that Crawford has fought on uh, pay-per-view a couple of times, at least once. I know it didn't do super well, but I think that these, uh, with, a spite, with a fight of this magnitude, those ESPN subscribers, ESPN Plus subscribers, those people that you'll capture who may not have been watching boxing uh, out, uh, prior to this deal with Top Rank, I think that will bleed over into what ultimately is pay-per-view numbers where the two face off. So I think this is all just BS tactics is on the side of speech as far as getting this fight made, throwing out this 60-40 or 70-30 uh, percentage split. I feel that he is the hold up in the fight. That's my opinion. And, you know, I think uh, Keith Thurman was also, <laughs> he was thrashing Bob Arum, you know, not so long ago in a live Instagram uh, chat. So. Oh, yeah. I didn't listen to it, but I did yeah. see some uh, comments <laughs> and stuff around me. So, which I think was kind of, you know, unnecessary and not so classy. So, uh, and then he accused him also, Aaron, of not getting expense, you know, the fights uh, that he should have or whatever. I don't know. Oh, not getting Crawford fights? Or Crawford, yeah, sorry. Cool. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Keith does a lot of talking these days, doesn't he? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I used to be a fan of his, but uh, that was some time ago, and uh, since then he's really not done so much since the last few years. He oh yeah, keeps his mouth uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith, one time Thurman. Yeah, we'll see what's in, what's in store for him. One time is a pretty appropriate nickname, I think. <laughs> all right, all right. I see it online, Keith. Once upon a time, <laughs> yeah, once upon a time. That's right. <laughs> all right, um, uh, we can jump ahead. Uh, of course, we could because we're still only in 2000. Let's uh shoot to 2001. <laughs> But in 2000, just uh, to lightly go over, you also had Evander Holyfield versus John Ruiz. Uh, and of course, you know, as with any John Ruiz fight, if he's not getting knocked out, it's probably not going to be the most exciting. Um, <laughs> Lennox Lewis uh, took on David Tua. Is a fight where uh, Lennox Lewis, again, showed his uh, dominance as a, uh, as a superior boxer uh, at heavyweight. And he he was able to nullify the game of the what I say is undefeated fantasy fighter David Tua because anytime you mention him in a fantasy fight, uh, people say he he beats or knocks out anyone you uh, match him up against. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was somewhat of a mismatch because Tua is so much shorter than Lewis and Lewis and uh. simply. He wasn't able, yeah, to really catch him with so many punches, and and yeah. Lewis really used his height advantage well. So yeah. yeah, and I've always said in his biggest fights, Tua has always lost, even though he's a puncher yeah. and all that. You might say that. I mean, he knocked out Ruiz and Moore, but Ruiz was a little bit before his and best. And Moore was was not 
he was yeah. nine in that fight for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so he does have some good wins, but uh, not. I mean, no, really, really big ones. That's yeah, and true. I think if you're a, you're a good boxer, oh, you were able to outpoint him. Yeah, Hasim Rahman, but that one was also kind of controversial, you know. Yeah. He hurt him after the bell, and then in the next round just kept on pounding, and it was yeah. Yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, then yeah, so getting into. Oh, oh, I guess we got to talk about that last fight of uh, the 2000, December 2nd, Felix Trinidad defeated Fernando Vargas via 12th round KO to unify the WBA, excuse me, and IBF light middleweights titles. Another exciting fight full of drama seemed to be the case with uh, uh, Trinidad fights for sure and Vargas fights for that matter. Uh, what are your thoughts on that fight? It's another memorable one. Yeah, it was very good. I mean, it was like a movie fight. As I it. <laughs> it was a lot of uh, yeah, action and uh, some drama, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think Vargas really showed, I mean, that he had a lot of heart and a lot of oh, yeah. potential. But uh, maybe that fight had come a little bit too soon, maybe. I don't know for him. Yeah. Uh, and also, he got uh, hit low a few times, you know, uh, by Trinidad. So yeah, that's a lesson. And hey, folks, hey, fellas, uh, yeah, you're, you're feeling hurt. You feel like uh, you, you're you're about to get a little woozy. Hit him below the belt. Yeah. So that's what <laughs> happened. I mean, uh, Vargas put him down in round four, and uh, just as he was about to, you know, really get him in trouble, it was then. A, oh a, yeah. That's true. A <laughs> low bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was an interesting fight. And uh, Trinidad had hurt Vargas in the very first round. And, yeah, and Vargas was some down. great resolve yeah. to come yeah. back from that. And uh, you're right. Uh, I know I had that fight scored up until that point somewhere in there in my phone. But um, but yeah, it was it was a it was an action packed fight, and certainly um, Felix Trinidad benefited from those little breaks with the low blows uh that kind of mm. came at the right time and allowed him to uh catch his breath and get his win back and uh he ultimately was able to uh get Vargas out of there who was game of course but mm. you know they was Trinidad went in for the kill it was it was yeah. pretty much no stopping him at that point. Yeah that's true he was just uh on his uh I mean on his at his peak, definitely still, and yeah, and yeah, that's kind of the uh story of Vargas, like almost there, yeah, probably up on the cards, team site, things of that nature, but almost there. And yeah, know. I think he was a little bit too aggressive for, for his own good because against Trinidad in the first round, he just charged in and he got caught. Mm -hmm. it, it looked funny, even. Way he got caught, it was he, oh, he yeah, was really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seemed Same like he, he shot himself. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not that he wasn't, he was very good, I think. He's yeah. got had yeah, the talents, so uh, but he simply didn't have that, I guess, IQ that it took to really, you know. Oh yeah, and he was uh, and that's uh, that similarly uh, is what got him in the uh, fight with uh, Oscar De La Hoya as well. He, he started off great; he was super aggressive, great. Yeah. And as the rounds come on, came on, you know, and once when once Vargas was hurt, you know, he wasn't the type to tie up or anything. So uh, macho, <laughs> man. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. Definitely, he's macho. So, uh, so. You know, that led to kind of yeah. some of his failings uh, there on the uh, on the top end. But, yeah, definitely uh, both uh, very good fighters. Mm. Uh, I enjoyed watching. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Two uh, warriors and, yeah, classical <laughs> type. Old school. <laughs> Old school. All right. Uh, let's jump to 2001. Of course, the first fight that pops up, I guess we got to talk about it. January 20th, Floyd Mayweather Jr. dominates oh. Diego Corrales to successfully <laughs> successfully defend his WBC super featherweight title. Now, Doralis didn't have a belt coming into that fight. For some reason, I was thinking Doralis yeah, had a title. 
IBF or something, I think. Super fairway, yeah. Yeah, so what were you... Uh... Well, I think he actually vacated, maybe. So. Oh, okay, yeah, because it was showing, and I was just yeah. going back to look, because it was showing his... Uh, it was just... Uh, oh, yeah, it looks like... Uh... Oh, yeah, he did have an IBF and mm. IBA in the fight prior to uh, Angel Man Freddy. Uh, so, yeah, 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 I think you're right. He must have vacated. Yeah. So my thoughts on that fight, yeah. <laughs> Another one I would like to see again because I haven't seen it for some time. But it was uh, just a case of uh, Mayweather, and, you know, at his best, really taking apart yeah. the almighty <laughs> Chico Corrales. And, yeah. Uh, it was a very impressive display, you know, by Mayweather. And, yeah. And that was really Mayweather's true coming out party, the way he was able to dominate and dismantle Corrales, who yeah. many saw this as a 50-50 fight. And you really got to see Floyd Mayweather at the top of his uh, offensive prowess in that fight. Now, of course, uh, as time went on, he became known as more of the defensive fighter. And I guess that kind of tied into his money Mayweather stick. But uh, this was the version they call pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. And he might have been with top rank at this time, right? So he yeah. uh, he was more offensive, and and this was really the shining fight of his career from just an overall standpoint. Like if you go to a performance that shows you how great he is or was, then you definitely look to this Diego Corrales fight because he just dominated him in a fashion that. Corrales, you wouldn't have thought that Corrales uh, was a fighter who should should have even been at that level the way he looked in that fight or the way Mayweather was able to make him look. Yeah. Uh, you would think he was some just undefeated mandatory coming in, uh, just sort of like a tossover fight when it and how it actually looked. But um, it was just a dominant performance by uh, Mayweather over the, over the late great. Diego Chico Corrales, who, of course, is going to pop up in this list again, as we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I know he will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Let's see. March 3rd, Ruiz defeats Evander Holyfield. That's worth a mention. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya won against Arturo Gatti, who should pop up again in this list for oh, sure. Um, a, uh, really nice. I mean, uh, not very long fight, but uh, true yeah. war. I mean, I really yeah. love love watching this fight. Uh, I've seen it a few times now, yeah. Yeah, I got to go back. I, 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 uh, I'm trying to yeah. get to it. It was to just a, a matter of, you know, who, I mean, the guy he was a small guy, so. Yeah. He, win simply but he really put up a great fight and yeah and of course uh skill level the vast difference um in in respective rights because Arturo Gatti has a level of uh resolve in that sort of warrior mm. mentality that few have been able to match uh as decisively uh but definitely a uh, skill level slight gap <laughs> just mm. thinking about it from a fundamental standpoint but uh, yeah, so he, yeah, he landed some really good punches, and of course, De La Hoya, he he landed the more the most hurtful ones, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> right. But of course, he was the bigger, stronger guy, simply. And yeah. All right. Yeah. So then, oh, here goes a good one. April seventh, uh, two thousand one. Prince oh, Nassim Ahmed. Taking yeah. on MAB, Marco Antonio Barrera. And this was a fight that a lot of people were looking forward to, only mm. to be disappointed, to be honest with you, disappointed. You know, uh, of course, now Ahmed had the bravado, and, uh, and both were coming in. And, and uh, well, I think uh, Ahmed was uh, undefeated. Marco Antonio Barrera may have had mm. one or two losses. I can't remember exactly. But mm. Dwayne could argue um, that, you know, he had been in with the likes of uh, Eric Morales. This was really the first fight for Ahmed where 
I think people were like, hey, this is going to take you to the, take you even beyond and over the top as far as, and he had a good career, but, yeah. um, you know, and he was in his prime right here, seemingly at least. And it, the yeah. fight in itself, I guess, didn't live up to the uh, ring entrance. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, people say that I know I read because I, mean, I didn't really study the Barrera's latest fights, you know. Mm -hmm. We studied the ones when he got <coughs> sorry, stopped by uh, Junior Jones, you know. Okay. Type oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he would have had two losses coming in yeah. and record Antonio Barrera. Yeah. So Barrera was, he had really developed, you know, as a boxer, as a technical uh, yeah, fighter, so, and it showed, showed really against Hamed, and I think Hamed wasn't really trained, doing enough training or sparring, and yeah, I've seen uh, like a HBO uh, pre-fight documentary on mm -hmm. that one, so <laughs> I, I remember Manny Stewart, he was there, he visited the training camp, and then Right after he saw Hamed train, he said something's wrong. He's just punching too wide, and he's not, you know, he he could see it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, in that fight, he was really doing that. He was swinging wildly, then getting caught. Just... Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, with his hands down and all that stuff. Yeah. Which was you know, sort of his style, but yeah, he was definitely not on his game in this one. Or and Barrera, of course, who was, you know, he's one of those fighters who had the same mentality as like his face never changed, and and you know he just came in, you know, to get the job done. Yeah. Each time. <laughs> Baby faced assassin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was really. I think he also had something against Hamed because maybe. Ahmed didn't give him much chance, I believe. And uh, yeah. too, just overconfident and had a big ego, of course. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and surprisingly, that was, uh, he retired after that fight. Um, yeah. Did he come back for one more fight? Or, yeah, uh, he had one more fight, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, one more fight, and then it was just... Uh, the end and he might have been what like 28 or 29 or something at that time yeah he i think I when that sure. fight happened with barrera he was 27 and then he was 28 when he had the last one i think yeah okay so yeah so yeah it was like uh early retirement hey at this point um both fighters are, uh, international boxing hall of famers so and now he looks very very different he is put on yeah. <laughs> certainly uh, Certainly, he, he's been living in a kebab shop, sort of. <laughs> he's not training anymore. Yeah, training <laughs> in kebab shop. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Uh, April twenty second, Hasim Rothman in the first fight with Lennox Lewis knocked him out via fifth round TKO in South Africa. Yeah, that was a shocker. That was a really big shocker, of course. Yeah, you know, I hadn't see, seen it when it happened, but I, I watched oh, yeah. it later. Thank so I, I remember I went to the holiday to visit uh, uh, my cousin in Bosnia, and he told me, he was like, oh, this new guy, he is the new heavyweight champion. I said, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> this guy, he knocked out Lewis. What? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I was, and uh, yeah, it was just a great knockout, of course, for Ahmad. Yeah, and, and you could yeah. argue a lackluster performance from Lennox Lewis, who looked pretty yeah. much gassed and uh, People say sort of out of it. People say he didn't train that much. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know, it's, it's mostly what fans say when yeah. a fighter loses, so I... You gotta yeah. take it with a pinch of salt. Also. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he uh, trained well or not, but uh, but he he definitely uh, was looked lackluster and he yeah. got caught uh, trying to be slick. Um, so, yeah. 
Because prior to that, he was he was smiling and trying to <laughs> give the impression that nothing was hurting him. Uh, and then he got caught with a big bomb and six shockwaves <laughs> in the boxing world. I remember uh, when it happened and just uh, hearing about it. Like I didn't watch it at that particular time either. Uh, but yeah, I just remember the shockwaves uh, that that were sent through the boxing world because no one was really expecting uh, Rothman to uh, defeat Lennox Lewis, who was yeah, uh, I mean, he really was... at the top of his game. Yeah, he was a wild card and had had a couple of losses, I believe. And, and yeah. yeah, and so. hey, it made a star of uh, Hasim Rothman. That shows you, hey, you can you get yeah. one of those. Well, at least one could argue it's different now. It, it has come back, but you could get one of those titles, and it could really make you a star in the sport, becoming a heavyweight champion of the world. I feel like a little luster was kind of lost in between the. Ruslan Chagayevs and there may have been some others who had some of the belts spread about. I remember yeah. Al- Alwev had one, and it was and then of course uh, the Klitschko's yeah were domination course. for a period. It's lost its glamour, you know, and uh, those guys, even though they were good, I mean they were yeah. all good technicians like Chagayev, Ibrahimov, and all those guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it wasn't that same luster and fanfare for there for a while but i feel like it's back to a degree in some sense mm. and, uh now with this crop of uh heavyweights tyson fury J- anthony joshua leading the charge of course deontay wilder up there we'll see if he actually comes back fights and is able to regain a title again which mm. is uh, going to be tough billing um yeah. but we'll see uh you have the punch yeah. chance Will be interesting to see if he can recover. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be play a, a prophet, so I'm not gonna see if that will happen. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So um, moving ahead, we'll skip past a few of these. Though definitely mention Felix Trinidad beat William Joppy for the WBA middleweight title, uh, and that was an excellent performance. Um, I know yeah. Joppy feels that uh, uh, something was wrong with uh, the way Trinidad wrapped his hands because of. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. It, I heard it wasn't illegal. I was asking online and all that stuff uh, just for people who may know. But from what I gathered and then hearing Nassim Richardson because the fight that uh, is coming up, we can talk about who we can go into is, of course, uh, Trinidad versus. Uh, um, Bernard Hopkins, Hopkins but yeah. it was, uh, I guess, the way the hands were wrapped in that fight was illegal in New York, but it wasn't illegal in oh, other yeah, states. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I couldn't get a clear answer. Some were, so, uh, some people said it was because uh, of the tape, uh, and some people were saying that it's because of the gods. Who knows? Uh, I think, I don't, yeah. I don't know. It wasn't clear to me either, uh, but I, I don't think it was, of course, something as serious as with margarito no 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 definitely not and that uh, was really heavy stuff yeah it was just a um new york thing from my understanding and maybe some other states but this just so happened to be new york and i think it may have been associated with the guys gauze but but um who knows uh but you know i don't think it's really helped i mean yeah (laughs) Yeah, it always uh punch you know yeah he always and he had, he he was pretty fast for a midweight, so you know. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, Trinidad's one of my favorites to watch. So that leads us to September 29th, and this is unfortunately the one of the big major events after the whole September 11th uh, attack, 2001. R.I.P. to all those people. Um, but September 29th, uh, Bernard Hopkins taking on Felix Trinidad. Uh, we had a WBA, WBC, and IBF titles. He became the undisputed middleweight champion, apparently, uh, by virtue of uh, picking up this win in what was a great performance uh, from uh, Bernard Hopkins, who's always been a savvy, wily, tech- technical veteran. And he's mm-hmm. actually one of the uh, greatest fighters who fight at an advanced age, of course, as his career went on. But he really stood out in this performance. Um, I can't remember if they were fighting at uh, a catch weight or if it was full fledged at 160. 
I, I don't remember either. I, I know he fought with uh, against Oscar at a catchway, but okay, I'm not sure about Felix. Maybe not. Yeah. But yeah, one thing about uh, Bernard Hopkins, he he he's a big middleweight, um, and yeah, well. and that's the weight he was able to sustain himself at uh, uh, mm-hmm. for a bit long period before, of course, moving up. Um, but he was a big middleweight, and, and you, in order to defeat him, uh, generally just throughout his career, really you had to bring something to the table. Primarily, I, I see that he's had troubles with uh, athletic guys, you know, guys who uh, like the Jermaine Taylors, of course, the Roy Jones yeah. early on, uh, some of those super athletic guys. Uh, uh, but generally, yeah, he was a tough guy to figure out and, and defeat because he needs so many tactics and he would do whatever uh, to win, of yeah. course, as you pointed yeah. out before. Yeah. <laughs> he always had a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whether complaining to the ref or slipping into punches <laughs> that he shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about the fight because, yeah, I think the reason why Trinidad did rather poorly because, of course, Hopkins had a really good uh, strategy. Oh, yeah. Really good tactics, but also because uh, he was the first really big midway that, that Trinidad yeah. fought, you know, Joppy was just not a, a big yeah 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 definitely <laughs> so got to yeah. give him props because yeah that is a tough task to uh, jump in there um, yeah and, and I don't know how many fights he had at was that his second there might have been like his second or third fight at that yeah second I think at middleweight yeah I was trying to see that I scored that um, of course so he was that. a little too <laughs> ambitious I guess he yeah just, well, he would just take over the whole division just like that. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, it hit back at him. And... Yeah, he's uh, definitely um, as he uh, moved up, um, at least from middleweight. And I know he fought, uh, came back out of retirement once to fight Roy Jones at yeah, like one seventy or something like that. Um, but yeah, that really wasn't suited for him. I would say. Yeah, it wasn't. I saw that fight for the first time not long ago, and yeah, he was just uh getting <laughs> was uh, yeah hurt too much too too easily i'd say by jones no yeah yeah and it was just yeah it was, it was one of those uh sort of like comeback fights that really uh you know you yeah. look at it on the record and <clears throat> tell the full story he probably shouldn't have been in there even though yeah, jones, was, jones was past it himself you know yeah <laughs> He was doing well at first. I remember five first five rounds, then Jones just started, you know. Yeah, he just started taking punishment after that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's funny how how uh, how some fighters uh, end up, uh, you know, coming back for these types of sort of like one last grasp and. Yeah, it's like one more time, and. <laughs> the, uh, you know the boxing world. Um, okay. November 3rd, uh, Koista Zhu took on then undefeated Zav Judah, <laughs> Super Judah. And we all know what happened in that fight. Um, power came through is probably one of the most interesting uh, and ever uh, replayable knockouts one will ever see in the sport. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, uh, Costa Zhu caught Jab, Zab Judah with his hands down, kind of stepping back. Uh, matter of fact, it was twice. Uh, he did it twice in succession, and mm. he ended up uh, getting caught with a big right hand, I believe it was, that uh, sent him down, and Zab yeah, popped very, up yeah. and stumbled. The very end of that round also. Yeah, yeah. It was like one or two seconds left, just. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. It, is, it was at the end of the round, uh, and uh Zab, yeah, hey, that shows you. Hey, don't don't take your foot off the gas at any point. Don't get too yeah. cocky and above yourself. And uh, exactly what Judah did, yeah. <laughs> and from what I gathered from interviews and stuff from others, uh, Zab Judah came into that fight with a lot of confidence, and uh, he assumed that uh, Zoo wouldn't be able to touch him, and yeah, and now he could. Of speed, I guess. Yeah, Zhu was not so fast, but uh, he was just someone that was very uh, focused, very you know, 
Yeah. Uh, really good. Uh, very patient, you know. He didn't really, even when he was getting hit, he didn't just rush to hit the, the other guy back. He just waited for the right moment, you know, just to land that right punch. That's what he did, of course, there. And yeah, yeah, that's how he, he won. Yeah, I, I remember watching uh, some interviews uh, Roger Mayweather was doing. He was talking because Roger Mayweather fought uh, Custis, and I remember in one he was saying oh, yeah. that, uh, he had talked to Zab Judah before the fight, and uh, he was telling Zab that uh, Custis is physically strong, and Zab thought that uh, his right. speed would be the factor and that he wouldn't be able to uh, catch up with him to be able to land anything. And uh, oh. look what happened. Uh, yeah, he yeah. was very strong, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. I think <laughs> Judah just simply, uh, yeah, I, I remember many others in USA were picking Judah to win, I think, but, uh, or a, a few of those. Uh, under fought. from down under. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, and after the fight, uh, it turned a little crazy with Zab Judah uh, going yeah. after Jay Nady and yeah. he ended up being suspended everything that was quite a spectacle yeah <laughs> yeah hey yeah um and and looking at the knockout uh, and the, i see why uh nady stopped it i think yeah zab yeah. was uh he was he was wobbly on his feet for sure yeah, he knocked up so funny. quick but even when uh he was trying to complain to uh nady he was stumbling backwards uh yeah so, I understand it, but Judah, hey, if he felt that he was a uh, game, he, he should have looked a little bit better about uh, yeah. how he was popping up. <laughs> and first, at first, he didn't really know what happened you know, when he was against yeah. the ropes, like, and then it was <laughs> when it dawned on him, like, he was no, started <laughs> crying almost. And then, yeah, it was embarrassing to watch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Um, so from there, November 17th of 2001, Lennox Lewis recaptured his heavyweight title by defeating Haseem The Rock Rothman. Yeah, not The Dream, but The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Just The Rock. <laughs> hey, yeah. and, uh, this was, uh, you know, A one of uh, my favorite yeah. knockouts to see. Yeah. And it just so happened, it was like picture perfectly placed. Uh, when uh, yeah. Rockman went down, he was uh, right in the middle of Don King's logo. Yeah, <laughs> wrong. So Lennox <laughs> Lewis crowned him. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like right it's wrong, bro. Yeah, where's your crown, King Nottingham? Like. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, that go just and Lennox Lewis was not messing around that fight. Uh, he was 100 yeah. percent focused, and he was not going to lose on that night. Yeah, he was uh, very determined. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I remember they also had some sort of uh, scaffold at, at, before the fight. At oh, the yeah. Studio. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, ESPN, they were on there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that is so funny. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it, it's some it, started, it turned into a wrestling match, not a boxing match. <laughs> so. Some comments. Uh, 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 led to some things being brought up. Uh, uh, family got brought into it. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. I know Louis, he had a tendency also to say some stuff, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> like trash talk. And yeah, he was no stranger, so yeah, yeah, that was a classic. Uh, that was a classic uh, interview right there, or yeah, yeah, at least like, the, the stuff that happened afterwards. Um, <laughs> mm. they basically broke down the whole set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was uh, the end of Hasim Rahman as a... Yeah, but that's the type of drama we like in our uh, heavyweight fights, you know? We like that type of drama. <laughs> yeah, that's something special. Uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we can jump into 2002. Uh, first fight, January 26th, Vernon Forrest. The late Vernon Forrest took on Sugar Shane Mosley. Um, this is for WBC welterweight title. Forrest basically was able to outbox Shane Mosley. Now, um, Forrest had been around. This was essentially his coming out party for the most part. 
but they may have had some history in the amateurs, if I recall, or something of that nature. Yeah. But, uh, Forrest wasn't coming in there as an opponent. Forrest, uh, I guess, knew that he was going to be able to defeat Mosley, and he sub sub subsequently uh, was able to outbox, uh, of course. Yeah. And he, but overmatched and he, in this in this matchup stylistically, uh, Chain Mosley. Yeah, he he put him down twice also in the second yeah. round. That was the first time I believe that Mosley was really hurt and down in a fight. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Forrest just had the right uh, tools to beat Mosley. Yeah, this is where they say styles make fights, and this yeah. is the style that was a uh, uh, very hard one for Shane Mosley to deal with. Mm -hmm. That, of course, and uh, Winky Wright. Um, yeah. Those were two styles he just didn't have much for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And Bernal being the taller guy, good jab, you know, good uh, boxing skills, everything. Hard hitting, hard right hand. I mean, big right hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he had that, yeah. He was very gifted. Oh, yes, indeed, indeed. Um. So yeah, that was a good one, uh, and I'm sure that'll pop back up. Uh, the two of those fighters for sure. Uh, looking here, we had a um, oh yeah, Mark Bernard Hopkins defended his titles <laughs> as undisputed champ. Uh, uh, DZ Ricardo Mayorga. Oh, here we go. Um, here goes one. April twentieth, two thousand and two. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Jose Luis Castillo in their first fight. And this is a fight that uh, forever will be tied to the, both of these fighters' names. Uh, yeah. For Castillo, um, of course, the Corrales fight will be his uh, biggest mark in terms of just that was an all-time classic. Mm. But this fight is an all-time controversial fight. Uh, so what are yeah. your thoughts on what went down on that night? Yeah, it was. Uh, I've seen it, of course, and scored that fight. I know Mayweather was better firing the first four rounds, I think, and then Castillo kind of he took over, started to bully Mayweather in the next, uh, well, five, six, I don't know. And uh, I know both guys had a point deducted also. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I scored that fight like. Uh, 115, maybe to 113 for uh, Castillo, actually. So, yeah. yeah, I uh, I scored it in favor of Mayweather, probably the same score the other way. I don't know where I captured it at. Um, I, I remember scoring it before, but um, it might be it might have been lost in the shuffle of uh, <coughs> yeah, phone upgrade or whatever. Because I see a lot of stuff that uh, I know that I'd score is not no longer in there. But, um, yeah, so uh, yeah. close. I know in the eighth, ninth, some, some, some of those rounds were. So, uh, yeah, I'd yeah. have to look at it again for sure. Um, but I do remember scoring it for Mayweather. Uh, I thought, uh, and, well, it was visible uh, or clear that, you know, for, in terms of the jab output that Mayweather was dominant in that area. Um, yeah. but that being said, uh, Castillo himself had the higher output. And people, of course, yeah. bring it up. You know, they get to uh, people. We have uh, fighters like this, and uh, they're uh, prominent, and you have such strong fan bases or people on any particular side. Then they get into the little tiny tidbits, the small details, and everyone yeah. becomes the experts, you know. Uh, so a lot of people with this fight were saying, hey, the store. Look at it round by round. How many rounds did uh, Mayweather win versus Castillo? Every mm. round resets, and it's a new fight yeah. every round. You know, you get that type of stuff. Uh, so yeah. that kind of came into the mix. Um, but very, very controversial fight. Of course, HBO had it scored for Jose Castillo, um, yeah. which, of course, they're not always right. But, uh, hey, they, they definitely... Uh, uh, they help the case or it matters uh, seeing their yeah. score and why, you know, and having that comparison. I believe that guy Leatherman has Castillo winning eight rounds or something. Mm. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Harold. Yeah. Late Harold Letterman. Yeah, I remember he did have him up. So yeah, yeah. it was uh, it, it was very <coughs> controversial. Um Yeah, but I thought that Castillo definitely deserved to win that one. I haven't seen the second one actually yeah. yet, so I can't comment on him that, but uh I had I have seen the second one and I had the uh, I'm trying to, I, I remember scoring it. It's been a while since I saw it, but I did have uh, Mayweather winning the second one. Um, yeah, I think that And he did a little bit more clear. Yeah, a bit fair decision, yeah. Yeah, I remember Mayweather hurt his hand at some point in that first fight. And, uh, well, yeah, that's possible, yeah. And he was uh, stuck to primarily using the left hand. But, yeah, it, it's, it's def definitely one of those uh, fights that is uh, – Hmm. Always gonna have an asterisk in the minds of uh, many. Yeah, Castillo <laughs> was really quite. Uh, you know, it was rather amazing because he was a typical Mexican fighter, and yet he he also beat Stevie Johnston, uh, who oh, yeah. was kind of like Mayweather. You know, very clever fighter, and good yeah. defense. Yeah, so he was able to to deal with that kind of style. Yeah, you know, stuff definitely. You know, when you're good to the body and that type of stuff, you yeah. can really uh, check up some things uh, with with mm. fighters who are more the movers. Um, so yeah, so yeah, he's, he's uh, one yeah definitely one of the best Mexican fighters of that or fighters of that whole era. I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he 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 is a standout name. Um, the fight after that, of course, uh, is the 20, uh, 2002, um, I was going to say 2020, but the 2002 <laughs> ring magazine fight of the year, the first fight between Mickey Ward and Arturo Gotti. This is a fight <laughs> that many view as the standard, the greatest fight of all time. Yeah. Um, I don't share those same sentiments, but it is one of the greatest fights of all time. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for that sustained action back and forth, uh, and hey, balls to the walls, who cares about uh, looking pretty in here? It's definitely that fight for you. It is the greatest fight in that regard. Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't have much to say except, yeah, it's truly an amazing it speaks fight. It for itself, right? Yeah. It's just no more to say, really. It was, Gaddy was down, right? Yeah, he was yeah. down, ninth round, and he got up. He he looked very hurt, like, oh yeah, like pain. But he got up. He was a warrior, of course. And Gatti. I know some people. I didn't score it, but a friend of mine thought that Gaddy deserved to win. Actually, that fight. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, he was able to. Uh, he went won the two subsequent fights, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that but that one was a standout, and the other ones had uh, action, but it's nothing like uh, it was nothing like uh, that first fight that uh, yeah. really captured the minds of uh, many and helped to leave a mark for the both of them. And it actually probably took uh, uh, that series in itself helped to get Arturo Gatti into the uh, Hall of Fame. So, mm, goes yeah. to him. Yeah, he uh, was late to uh, Earl Gotti. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So moving ahead, worth mentioning Evander Holyfield defeating Hasim Rothman. <laughs> of course, uh, this is Evander getting up there. This is, this is, you know, uh, he he still went on for for a little bit, but yeah, definitely. Uh, it was Evander that. had left a lot in the ring in those series <laughs> with Riddick Bo. Um, yeah. sure. So this was an older Evander, still formidable uh, Evander Holyfield, uh, but by comparison to say Lewis or whatever, um, yeah. Lewis, you know, he went about his career a little bit differently and didn't really yeah. have those types of uh, wars that uh, Evander Holyfield had. Um, yeah, that's true. And you know, not as many, definitely. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely not as many. Though I think that is worth mentioning. I think that uh, had uh, Lennox Lewis fought uh, Riddick Bow, I think that he would have defeated Riddick Bow, potentially stopped him. That's just yeah. my. Thought. 
Well, yeah, it's possible. I don't know. I I am a fan of really ball, so I, like I, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say like, yeah, I, I think Bo had a chance, of course, to win too that uh, against Lewis, but unfortunately, we didn't get to see. What... Yeah, that's one of those unfortunate uh, situations where we have uh, definitely, <clears throat> definitely in these two thousand from two thousand to the current decade. We've seen more, and I know it goes back in history, you know, where you didn't have the big fights, but that was a fight that, man, the public would have, uh, it would have been a treat, you know, just to see these two big athletic yeah. fighters uh, just going at it. And Definitely. I mean, two really huge guys of the same size who could yeah. really fight and yeah. uh, who could take a punch also, both of them. Oh, yeah, both of them certainly could. Yeah. A so, lot like uh, what we're seeing today, of course, egos got in the way. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, there was so, a lot of shenanigans going on, like Rock Newman. Uh, uh, yeah, he was kind of, I think, maybe, uh, I don't remember, or it was Lewis's people who were asking for too much money. I have read about Oh, it. yeah. But you know, <laughs> there's always that kind of talk. Oh no, he they ask too much, yeah. and the other side said, "Oh no, they just didn't want to fight my guy." <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's gonna be tied to you know both of them, the fight that could have been. Um, so yeah, then moving on, probably the biggest fight of that 2002 <laughs> year as far as clamor public interest and just general fandom uh, oh. was Lynx Lewis taking on Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, the matchup people had been waiting probably like five, six years for. Uh, it finally happened. And unfortunately, while it was a decent fight and it was a heck of a performance by Lewis, um, it didn't give people what they thought they were going to get as far as Mike Tyson of old uh, coming in and really making it a fight. He did for maybe a round. Uh, it seemed yeah. interesting, but slowly and surely, Lennox Lewis was able to dominate and stop the legend that is Iron Mike Tyson. And we know that from there, things didn't get any better for Tyson as he continued on. Uh, but excellent performance by Lennox Lewis, and he showed that, hey, he was going to be a, a tough uh, cookie for Mike Tyson, regardless of yeah. when they had fought. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, Tyson didn't fight so many guys that were so big and so good at the yeah. same time, you know, and that's one of the big uh, factors, I think. Yeah. So uh, Lewis was simply uh, in a much better uh, shape than Tyson at the time. And of course, he turned mm -hmm. pro later and, you know, all that. Oh, yeah. Had less mileage on him, you know, all that stuff. <clears throat> and uh, Tyson had been to prison, you know, he had been suspended after the Holyfield yeah. uh, ear bite. And yeah, it just had too much to, to you know, distract him from... Oh, well, yeah, so. definitely. And, of course, the lead-up and everything was great. It was excellent. All the lead-up to the fight and everything was excellent. And, and uh, while the fight didn't live up, live up to the height, it still was a, a very good event, a memorable just yeah. sequence in, in all uh, the, the entire fight space uh, just surrounding this particular mm. event. And and you're, you're definitely correct in that uh, yeah, Tyson, you know, he went out against some bigger fighters at times, but... Um, of course, Lennox Lewis was probably, as far as those bigger guys he faced, the best combination of skill and power. Yeah. Um, and that would have been the case. And even and Lennox Lewis was uh, even a bit faster in the 90s. He, he came out a little bit faster offensively, you know. He was, yeah. less, he was less worried about, um, you know, um, his defensive uh, side, I, I would say. Mm, he used to be slower. Yeah, that's true. In some of his old fights, yeah, he looked kind of <laughs> slow, lumbering, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, 
So yeah, that was a good one. Uh, moving ahead, uh, we don't have to necessarily jump into it, but Marco Tennant will mention Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. They went at it again, another very good fight. Um, and this time, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera took the win, so he 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 got his revenge. Uh, and mm. those two, as mentioned, bad blood styles that were just going to make for uh, exciting fights uh, anytime they laced yeah. them up. I told Morales won that one actually, <laughs> yep. but it was a little bit. Uh, I know the first four or five rounds were a little bit slower uh, than in the first fight. So I guess <clears throat> they were both pacing themselves this time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought it was very close, yeah. But I think Morales won it, most likely, I think. But, yeah, I'll have to look back. I I, uh, I can't remember if I scored this uh, second one. I don't think I did. <coughs> oh, yeah. Might have to watch it again. But... Uh, yeah, not as much uh, sustained action as the first fight, but still a, a bit, very uh, action-filled fight. And uh, yeah. two, two, you know, elite-level uh, fighters uh, going at it in their primes, which is uh, what more can you ask for, really? Yeah. Especially these Definitely. days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it when uh, you don't have the posturing and back and forth uh, about uh, the purse split. You just... Let that be handled and you just get in there and fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Then after that, I guess it's worth mentioning, as we were talking about, it was a rematch between Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley. And oh. similar to the first fight, it was all Vernon Forrest. Uh, Shane Mosley, as we mentioned previously, uh, Vernon Forrest is just a tough style for him to deal with. Mm. Actually, I haven't seen that fight yet. <laughs> Or maybe I, I had started to watch it and then stopped, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I've seen some. Yeah, it's been a while for me, you know, kind of, yeah, you watch so much boxing, you kind of, uh, yeah, there's just so many things that pop up in your mind. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do recall that, uh, yeah, Burning Forest was able to, you know, uh, outpoint uh, him again. And of course, yeah. his length was a problem for Mosley. And and yeah. force was able I to use it, it was a little closer but uh, then the first one but uh, yeah you uh are really uh deserved victory for forest oh yes without a doubt um then uh september 14 2002 oscar de la hoya defeated fernando vargas in one of my favorite fights uh fights yeah. to watch and that's Probably true. my favorite De La Hoya fight of the crop, just given the bad blood coming into the fight, the anticipation. And I remember I couldn't get the pay-per-view or anything, so I was just kind of wondering what was going to happen. Then at that particular time, ESPN would show you uh, some of the little highlights after the fight take place. And I think they still do that stuff. with They do do it wow. now. But I remember seeing what went down there. I think they, I can't remember. I think they didn't show you the actual knockout. They would just show you some of the stuff leading up to it. And then, oh. you know, they don't let you know who won and how they won, but they wouldn't show you the moment where he actually stopped him or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember seeing that and I was thinking, oh, hey, uh, Oscar De La Hoya came in and he uh, really uh, shut uh, Vargas's mouth uh, because there was a lot of chatter going on leading up to that fight. Yeah, I bet. I I didn't really fall. I didn't watch that fight until maybe six, seven years afterwards. So, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. Vargas was one also to use such, uh, you know, trash talk. And oh, yeah. And, and it was also a, a battle of who was the true uh, Mexican-American yeah. fighter for the people. That's nonsense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, the some of them were looking at Oscar like he had sold out, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Oscar, so, hey, Oscar, you know, who was never like a, I would say, he, he would say so, but he wasn't a good trash talker. He seemed no, like no. a, <laughs> yeah, seemed like a yeah. nice uh, guy, so his trash talk didn't really go over in a 
in a fashion that uh he was like, the true he, golden boy right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> he was the golden boy <laughs> yeah definitely so um so yeah i just remember that and oscar hey he uh he ended up shutting his mouth in dramatic fashion with that 11th round stoppage, and it was yeah. a very good fight. But I think I had mentioned it earlier, Vargas, he came out of the gate storming, and he was really putting it on uh, Oscar De La Hoya. And uh, he was definitely the stronger fighter in the early part of the fight, and you could yeah. tell that physically he was he was definitely the stronger fighter uh, uh, early on. He did look big. Uh, yeah, that's definitely... Uh, yeah, I remember in the first round he had uh, Oscar in trouble against the ropes and oh, yeah, almost put him through the ropes. And yeah, he was able to push was, Oscar back. Yeah, the crowd was going wild because yeah. I think many of them were pro Vargas. Oh, yeah, 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 there was, there was, there was a lot of pro Vargas uh fans there. Like man of the people. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> represent true representative right there. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, Vargas, he was just like yeah, physically muscling uh, De La Hoya around. Uh, mm. I would say up probably through those first five rounds at least. Mm. Um, and then from there, yeah. you know, Oscar uh, technically yeah, started breaking down. Simply too much for him in the end. Uh, just a better fighter. And of course, that's not sh no shame yeah. for Vargas <laughs> because he was. That's a shame for sure. Yeah, he is a true great. I mean, the uh, yeah. whole time. Yeah. He took on, yeah, he took on the challenges. So, yeah, it worked out. Um, um, uh, because uh, he, he forever, a name that fans uh, bring up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, moving on, November 23rd, Gotti Ward 2, the unanimous decision uh, for Toro Gotti, mm -hmm. as mentioned. Another fight with uh, action, basically anytime those yeah. two lace it up, you're going to have some action. Not the type of action you saw in that first fight. Uh, they did uh, do things a little more tactfully uh, in those latter two fights. They tried to relive it. kind of hard to live up to uh, yeah. the emotions of uh, that first fight when it's one of those that goes into the annals yeah. of history, you know? Yeah, it's like a really good movie, you know, and then the sequel comes and everybody's yeah. like, oh, no, this is not as good as the first one. Yeah. Sucks, you know. <laughs> and there haven't been uh, too many matches or too many um, uh, trilogies or anything of that nature that uh, have lived up to the billing of the, the first. I would say the only that, yeah. the only one I can think of right now that probably did in some sense was uh, uh, Muhammad Ali against Joe Frazier in their oh. third fight. The second one didn't have the same luster as the first and third, but definitely that third, while it was a different type of fight as far as, uh, or at least different stages for the two fighters, oh. by comparison to that first fight, the uh, fight of the century, uh, which still can certainly hold that billing. Uh, the third one was uh, the Thriller in Manila, right? So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that one, hey, that was a trilogy that lived up to the billing and, and, and can hold yeah. its own against a great first fight, you know? That's true, yeah. That's the one I can think of. Mm, yeah, there haven't been many, certainly. <laughs> And, and, and you know, I heard mentioned that the, uh, and I haven't seen all of them, but the uh, Israel Vasquez, uh, Rafael Marquez fights. There yeah. they had four. Um, I think it was yeah. four fights they had. Uh, yeah. I heard all. I I I, I, I just try to think back. I think I seen the first one. I don't know that I seen the second and third. I know I saw the fourth one, which was not the same type of fights as those. Yeah, because this case was kind of shot already. Yeah, so. and he, uh, and his scar tissue, so he would just cut easily at that point yeah. for sure. And that was really kind of his last big fight as, as far as I recall. Because he really- Yeah, the first finish. three were really good. I mean, uh, I've seen them all, but now it's, there's been a while also since I saw them. Yeah. I might have to go back and uh, check those out, starting with the first yeah. again, you know, because I, I, I don't recall that I saw the second and third, um, but I know I saw the first and fourth. Um, but, yeah, another good series. Uh, but, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, 
Uh, and lastly, uh, in 2002, at least, uh, De La Hoya, I mean, not De La Hoya, but uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. ended up rematching Jose Luis Castillo, oh, yeah. as we were mentioning. And then in this fight, it was a little more clear decision for uh, Mayweather Jr., but still a tough fight for him uh, because stylistically, hey, Castillo had yeah. his numbers in some regards. <laughs> Nobody was going to beat Castillo easily in his yeah. part. Anyway. So, yeah, forget about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you literally had to uh, knock him out, you know, yeah. to stop him. Had to bleed. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so we jumped to 2002 or 2003. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so to start things out, January 25th, 2003, the unification fight, WBC, WBA welterweight title, the forever infamous and uh, famous uh, Ricardo Mayorga taking on Vernon Forrest in yeah. their first fight. And this what is <laughs> this is one of those uh, fights where, you know, you say styles makes fights. And that mm. even means if you're a superior boxer, Compare it to your opponent. Hey, if you're stylistically, the match is the matchup uh, is uh, one of those that is perfectly made. Then uh, anything yeah. can happen, and anything happened in this fight. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely. I mean, uh, maybe also Forrest was kind of uh, he didn't give uh, maybe Mayorga enough credit. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, probably. Well, I know when he was walking into the ring, he looked very like, like this is going to be a party. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> it was yeah, a good so little walkout. And he had just kid. signed yeah. a multi I, I knocked him out in two rounds. Like, that's kind of. Yeah, crazy. yeah, it's crazy. And he had, yeah. and HBO was even to mention it, but he had just signed a multi fight, I think like a four fight deal with HBO or something like that. Oh. Um, and this was the first of that deal. So that was a big misfortune, yeah. But yeah, he did come out uh, basically uh, like, hey, hey, he was feeling good, you know? Yeah, and he, I think it was a right hand, like right hook he was caught with. And uh, I think he, yeah. beat, he beat the count, but was not able to go. Yeah, he beat the count, but his eyes were wide open looking like, yeah. uh, what hit me? Um, so and, the ref was like, no, no, no. Yeah, can't. and he didn't have any complaints about the stoppage. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was a little, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, it, it looked a little premature, but not that yeah. much. I, I throw it in the side of a uh, little bit being premature as well. I do feel yeah. like he could have been given another chance, but yeah. as mentioned, he, he, he didn't put up a fuss, so maybe he himself knew that he wasn't uh, really uh, ready yeah. to continue. <laughs> well, yeah, what a victory for Mayorga, I mean, come on. <laughs> To yeah. knock him, a guy out like I mean the guy like Forrest in only three rounds. Three would have expected rounds. that really a huge upset. Yeah, definitely. Uh definitely that. Um moving ahead and as mentioned, we're going off of this list on Wikipedia and sometimes it may be because uh I don't know why, but March first, um Roy Jones taking on uh John Ruiz for the oh, WBA yeah. heavyweight title. But my thing is, it's not highlighted where you can uh, click on their names. I wonder why, like, hey, this, but I guess they, because Roy's going to pop up again, but this yeah. was a significant fight. This was the first time since, I can't remember who it was, a middleweight had went up to win a heavyweight title. Um, yeah. It's I not Fitzsimmons, is it? Is it Fitzsimmons? Um, yeah, maybe, or he was first to light heavyweight, but anyway, so was Jones, actually. So. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, first time since Michael Spinks when he beat uh, Larry Holmes. But that was a light heavyweight, but Jones yeah. started at 160, so. Yeah, he did, yeah, that's So true. that was the significance of it, not necessarily that light heavyweight, when I think it was because of 160. And I'll have to look this up, but I think yeah, then I think it was uh, Fitzsimmons. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Bob Fitzsimmons, which goes back to freaking uh, 1997 or something. Yeah, yeah, when he knocked out James J. Corbett, I guess. And you know, there would have been others who would have uh, done so. For instance, you know, we were talking, uh, and we're gonna have a discussion later on uh, this 
in, in February, Sam Langford, say for instance, yeah. had he gotten a, a heavyweight title shot, I'm sure that uh, he would have. Yeah, I was that. thinking of him, yeah, instantly, yeah. And he started at like, uh, I want to say lightweight or something of that nature. It may yeah, have been it was five, low. six, I believe. So, yeah, yeah, I think it was five, six and a half. And he was one of those rare fighters uh, who could carry his punch upwards in weight. Um, yeah. Similar to uh, Pacquiao, uh, uh, Pacquiao was able to carry his punching power up. Now, yeah, people yeah, can say what they want, so but yeah. yeah, people can say what they want, but he was able to carry it up, and it really he he kind of it kind of got limited at uh, 147. So once he got to 147, he really wasn't knocking guys out like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think his only stoppages at 147 are. Uh, Lucas Matisse, Chris Algieri, and uh, Miguel mm-hmm. Cotto. Was it? Was that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Cotto. Yeah, that was another. So, really, out of all his uh, fights at 147, I think those are the only three stoppages. So, he yeah. was able to carry his power to a certain degree, but he wasn't really uh, getting people out of there like that. No. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Getting back to the fight at hand, though, uh, Roy Jones versus John Ruiz. Of course, this was uh, uh, probably stylistically the perfect uh, matchup for Jones as far as going up to take on a heavyweight challenger, and yeah. he was able to use his speed. Really, his, his speed, athleticism, of course, but his speed is what really dominated uh, or allowed him to uh, uh, apply his trade in the fight and. Ruiz, who was a cautious fighter, who wasn't overly offensive, um, and really kind of—he was a, he's a world champion, but um, he wasn't a fighter that was going to take risks or anything of that nature. He, he yeah, was, very dull fighter. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say the quiet man. So that was a perfect yeah, nickname. He clinched for, a lot, uh, you know. So um, right. yeah. So yeah, so so Roy was able to do his thing um, and yeah. look good at doing so. Just to give it a boxing lesson, I think most of the best fight. So yeah, yeah. and then, you know the funny thing is, uh, Roy went on for so long, uh, and you know past his prime and all that stuff, and people at that particular time like, hey. He was uh he was really on top of his game and being mentioned as possibly the greatest fighter of all time like those type of words and and he's definitely one of the greatest uh who's uh laced him up but yeah. he went on for so long that it's it's kind of crazy that uh he lost a little luster from his name in a sense well we gave, became accustomed to him getting knocked out uh, which is yeah. unfortunate later on in his career. Yeah, it's really, I don't know, uh, he should have retired in like 2010 after that last, a second Hawkins fight, maybe, I don't know. Because, Some would argue he should have retired in 2004. <laughs> yeah, maybe even then, maybe. Yeah. But, <laughs> We're going to get to oh, yeah. uh, those fights yeah. with uh, Tarver. Uh... Tarver, yeah. But yeah, maybe he and and yeah, we're gonna get to yeah, we're gonna get to that first one actually. So yeah, uh, and then we'll bring this back up. So hold yeah. that thought. <laughs> uh, after that's June twenty first, twenty uh, or two thousand three, uh, Lennox Lewis defended his title against Vitali Klitschko in what turned out to be an exciting fight. Um, yeah. And this was a, uh, I guess. Uh, Klitschko's coming out party to the general public, in a sense. Even in a loss, uh, he gained a lot of fans, a lot of people who um, uh, saw that, hey, he he was tough and and showed some bravery. And he definitely, ultimately, of course, we know that the fight was stopped and his eye was really messed up. uh, Yeah. But he would have continued on if it were up to him, and he showed that he had that type of moxie. And uh, and this is probably the reason why many, and, and and of course we don't always have to compare, and it is hard to compare brothers, but many see him as a better fighter than Vladimir. Though um, I think Vladimir 
probably the better of the two, just my opinion. It's all opinions. Uh, yeah. But he showed in this performance that, hey, he could give the top dog at heavyweight everything he could handle. And Yeah, you know, I mean, I would say, I would put it like this, Vladimir was the better boxer while the yeah. Vitaly was the better fighter, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess yeah. that's a good way of uh, describing it, yeah. And, of course, also Vladimir had a little bit more power, I think, in his punches than... Yeah, uh, and, and, yeah. and many Stewart was able to really bring that out for him. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, Vitaly was, yeah, that fight was... Uh, Pretty, uh, the first two rounds, of course, he was it was all Vitali, and then, uh, yeah, then Louis started, he got in a few big punches, of course, but uh, which which produced those cuts, and uh, yeah, yeah. I actually heard this story a, a few days ago that after that fight, that Vitali actually was, was uh unconscious he had to be rushed in uh oh wow with the yeah into the hospital yeah he was taking some big shots you know i haven't seen this fight in a long time i remember watching it live when it happened yeah. it might have been showtime or it could have been hbo maybe one of the two but i remember watching it live and uh yeah he was taking some big punches there uh, yeah. at the tail end when uh lennox started to come on um i, I do feel feel as though Lennox was uh, coming on there at the latter part just before it was stopped. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, we thought it was maybe, he had spent too much in those early rounds, I think. And uh, But uh, yeah, he was still doing well. It's just not, it's just that he was kind of slowing down because of the cuts and, you know. All. And this is one of the rare occasions where Lennox was fighting someone bigger than him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's crazy to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I uh, I don't know. It was kind of just Vitaly's, uh, he showed, Vitaly showed the world what he was made of simply there and, uh, and then, of course, Lewis retired without giving him a rematch, and that that made him look bad, of course. So, but hey, you know, he is a guy who stayed retired, so one of yeah. the rare who actually uh, stayed retired, even though we yeah. heard his name crop up even he as was, late as a couple of years ago, or this year for an exhibition. But yeah, he, he was actually, smart enough to stay retired, definitely. Uh, and, yeah. and that's a lesson that I think. Uh, uh Roy Jones could have learned right there. Yeah. And then I'll get to that. He this is gonna be the perfect example. But um sure. but yeah Len Lennox knew that he was uh hey he knew that he didn't probably wasn't uh getting himself up in the fashion that uh he could mm. compete at that level going on without suffering another uh knockout loss so he was like I'm done. Yeah <laughs> I commend yeah. for that. Yeah, of course. There yeah. Was. So then um, thereafter, must mention that uh, Ricardo Mayorga, he rematched uh, Vernon Forrest and again was able to pull out a victory. And uh, as I mentioned previously, this is Mayorga. He's, he's not the most polished of fighters. He's really uh, a brawler, winger, type puncher fighter is kind of hard to yeah. even uh lump his style up into one lump his style into one category but he's just a tough rugged guy who was able to uh, get a world title or two uh in his career and he was able to this is one of those rare occasions well i guess it's not as rare but where a guy who you would think pick him apart from a boxing uh standpoint technically that being Vernon Forrest just really was unable to do anything with Ricardo Mayorga. It, it's interesting, right? Yeah, I think Vernon looked a bit intimidated also in the second fight because uh, I remember he was trying, of course. It was a close fight, but he was... Uh, too, too often it happened when he was attempting something and then Mayorga just threw it back, you know, at him and uh, he was... He would then just stand yeah. there and not know what to do. Like, uh, 
He was kind of being bullied, you know. Or yeah, 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 I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah, because this is uh, so this was one of those surprising situations. Yeah, and you're right, Vernon didn't the the confidence and bravado he had with Shane Mosley, he didn't have that with Ricardo Mayorga. Yeah, interesting. They were two very different guys, uh, Mosley and Mayorga, <laughs> and of course they wound up fighting each other in uh, twice, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so yeah, yeah, you're right. It's it's funny. It's funny how uh, things transpire. So yeah, that's just an interesting one. I, I think that will forever be an interesting one. The fact that Vernon Forrest uh, took those L's to Ricardo Mayorga, but hey, I like Mayorga. He's definitely an entertaining fighter. I give him that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. then, moving on, there's mention of Jeff Lacey taking on Richard Grant, but uh, that's just one thing. I guess that was considered a big one, but Lacey had a little fanfare coming up. Uh, in September 13th, Shane Mosley, they rematch, the rematch between him and Oscar De La Hoya, and yeah. of course, Mosley got the nod in the rematch. Um, and, and a lot like uh, the first one, uh, you, there were some who uh, felt De La Hoya may have deserved the night, uh, just as the case when they fought the first time. Yeah, I thought that. I thought mostly well, uh, he fought more more in spurts, I think, and yeah, he wasn't really active enough to deserve that night. So I think he might have won more, not more than four rounds, mostly something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, and at this point, uh, that's when uh, people start to mention, man, uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya seemed to can't catch a break in these huge yeah. fights. Uh, there to tell when, like, what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Really, that was a kind of strange, strange decision. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. So uh, then from there, November 8th, so we get to Roy Jones Jr. defeating Antonio Tarver by a controversial majority decision to recapture his, uh, or recapture the light heavyweight titles. He, uh, I guess, vacated maybe um, or whatever when he moved to heavyweight. Uh, but uh, it was a controversial decision there. Roy certainly uh, looked like that the task of uh, coming down may have taken uh, a slight toll on him physically, uh, or mm. at least uh, coming back that same year, he had moved up to heavyweight. So this was March to November. So it took him a, a little minute to properly get himself bulked up to get to uh, that 200 plus pounds he was at, or right around 200. Um, yeah. And then, and it was muscle, you know, because he was ripped and shredded, uh, going up to heavyweight, but he somehow was able to get back down to 175 in a matter of, I guess, months. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think it showed in that first fight with Tarver. Yeah, I didn't think it was so controversial. I mean, it was a close fight, but uh, yeah, I had Jones swinging, uh, I think, 150, 113 or something. I don't know. Yeah, I remember watching it, and I thought Jones won as well. I don't think I scored right. it, but I thought Jones, uh, they rightfully got the... Uh, Tower, you know. Tower looked, and I, I'm a fan of Antonio Tower, actually. I am. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, he looked good in the first four rounds, I remember, and he was really hitting Jones with a lot of punches, those combinations, and I think the crowd was swayed, you know, because yeah. afterwards they <laughs> chanted, you know, BS and stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Jones just, just took control of the fight after that. And, uh, yeah. And Tarver would have moments at times where he not throw and just simply look to land, look yeah. to an opening to land that left hand. So. Yeah. So he. I remember he came on again in the last couple of rounds. So that was when he came back, but it was too late. So too yeah, late. yeah. So, and, and that, and yeah, I know Tarver had done that in some other big fights as well, where you have some stretches where he's, he's just there posturing more so, just looking for a chance to lay in that hand, which, you know, yeah. is, a, is, a, is a good good uh, overhand left that he had there. 
being a yeah. southpaw, that's tough for a right-hander to deal with in general. Yeah, one of the things that I liked about Tower was that he had a, he was quite uh, complete uh, as a oh, fighter. Yeah. And he was never knocked out. That was pretty amazing. I mean, he, yeah. the fact he fought guys like, you know, Jones and Hop, uh, well, yeah. Hopkins. And yeah. Some of those guys that really can hit, you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's a, he's a definitely starting to uh, sport. And yeah, I like uh, Carver as well. Um, and I, and with this fight, I, I mentioned it and liking it to, and I liken it to, Lennox Lewis in the sense that when Lewis saw that uh, there may have been some slippage, he retired and he stayed retired. Now with Roy Jones, of course, he was, I believe, 33 at the time, and he may have been 34 by the time that him and Tarver fought in either the, in, in the second fight or whatever. But I think that after going through this, and I know Jones won the fight, but it was tough for him. You could tell it was tough. Um, mm -hmm. He probably should have thought about, you know, whether he continue on. And I know it's hard to say, hey, you're on top of your game. You really haven't, um, outside of that uh, technical um, loss to, or, or disqualification loss to uh, Montel Griffin, you really haven't yeah. lost a fight and you haven't really, uh, or you've been dominant to the degree of you were just winning. You, you hadn't really lost many rounds over the course of how many ever years, you know, he was so dominant that uh, he was barely losing rounds in fights, um, let alone yeah. losing a fight. And I'm sure a lot goes into it, but you could tell that that was a tough fight for him. And, uh, I just wonder if the thought should have come in mind that, hey, maybe me dropping down wasn't a good thing, and maybe this could lead to it being it for me. And But, of course, we know that in hindsight that didn't happen, but it was one of those situations where I wonder had Roy uh, looked back on it if he would have done something different. Yeah, I want so too. Oh. interesting stuff man um yeah. so moving ahead november 15th manny pacquiao against marco antonio barrera um and this was a fight where manny was really uh coming on this was early on where he was starting to make waves and uh get his name out there a little bit of course who would have envisioned it blowing up to the degree that it did, but uh, this is him really coming on early on, and he uh, really took people by storm by defeating uh, and actually stopping tough, as you mentioned, babyface assassin Marco Antonio Barrera, and uh, this was a good fight, an exciting fight, and uh, Barrera had his moments, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he did get a, a knockdown that was kind of... Uh, questionable in the first round. Uh, yeah, but Pacquiao was simply uh, uh, just a, fo <laughs> a force yeah. back then. It was Great way to put it. Unstoppable. And, uh, and yeah. Barrera, yeah, simply got, uh, yeah. <laughs> beat Pacquiao from, was not going to be denied. Yeah. There were, I heard some stuff about Barrera's having a uh, uh, his training camp, there was a fire, something like that. He oh, didn't yeah. really get to train enough, but maybe, I don't know if that's just... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a good fight, but in the, in the last half, maybe, it was pretty one-sided. Uh, or yeah. last three, four rounds, I, I don't remember, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, Pacquiao's just an offensive monster, and, and hey, I guess that's kind of what it takes to beat a guy like uh, Marco Antonio Barrera. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You're going to have to be on the offensive for sure. Mm. Just uh, too much, too much <laughs> speed and uh, power and everything, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, 
so yeah, that that was a good one. Uh, yeah, they got the uh, pick up uh, Manny pick up the featherweight title, and we know that his career would take off um, here uh, later on. Uh, yeah. Then the, the last fight of that year, I guess worth mention is uh, Corey Spink becoming the middleweight champion uh, by defeating uh, Ricardo Mayorga. Um, I guess yeah. undisputed. Um, welterweight, yeah. Oh, yeah, welterweight, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I haven't seen, I, maybe I've seen this fight, but what, very long ago, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't recall that I uh, actually watched it. Um, yeah, it was, short uh, little run there where he was uh, doing a little something. Yeah. Um, I guess the best uh, uh, victory for Spinks, along with the draft Judah, once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one's uh, going to uh, pop up, as a matter of fact, because we move into 2004. Uh, and mm. and mm. I don't know this, or, or Dale Cat, maybe uh, is light heavyweight. Um, so I can't talk about it. Who, 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 Cedar Gonzalez, I'm familiar with him, though. Um, but that was a fight that was the first fight, I guess, major to kick off January. Um, then March 13th, Winky Wright became the undisputed light middleweight champion after defeating Shane Mosley. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and, and now that I think about it, these were, when they were saying undisputed, um, maybe they weren't recognizing one of the belts at this, at this particular time. I don't know if it was IBF uh, or it was the one that didn't recognize as a, uh, at that level. Because I feel like, um, the way they're tossing, or was that truly the undisputed, uh, like having all of the major belts? Uh, but anyway, it's Winky Wright versus uh, Shane Mosley in their first fight. Yeah, that was. Uh, <coughs> I think uh, Winky had the IBF belt, and Mosley was a uh, WBC, WBA. Yeah. Okay, so, so was uh, it the WBO that wasn't uh, being? Yeah, that one was not. I think in the. Okay. Uh, in the mix, so but okay, it was simply uh, yeah, Winky Riley just had a really great, great performance there, and uh, yeah, okay, cool, he was yeah. really dominant, yeah, and just a stronger guy, you know, yes. You know. And uh, this was the first time, well, you know, Vernon gave uh, Shane Mosley trouble for sure, but mm -hmm. uh, Winky Wright gave him even more trouble and uh, uh, mm. Winky just had a style that it was tough for Mosley to deal with. One, because he, yeah. was, uh, he was excellent defensively, uh, definitely a top-notch defensive fighter. But uh, when he put together his punches offensively, he, he was just as formidable. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, give or take, that may have been something that may have played Winky right later on in his career, plus inactivity. Um, just not, you know, doing a ton offensively. But at that particular time, uh, Winky Wright was at the top of his game and Shane Mosley at 154 uh, bit off a little bit more than he could chew, uh, one could say. Yeah, definitely, yeah. He was simply, uh, Winky was too much for him. <laughs> too big a bite. <laughs> oh, yes. Without a doubt. Um, so then uh, 2004, oh yeah, April 10th, Corey Spinks defeated Zab Judah. Um, and this is one you remember. And this was probably the start of what was to come for Zab Judah in terms of uh, in some of the biggest fights, him not living up to that potential and or, you know, bravado that people may have thought you know uh he was yeah. really on and off kind of spotty and he was yeah. always mentioned up there with the top guys but uh he had a good backing and all that stuff but he was very spotty yeah he had a problem with uh consistency you know the, yeah. he would start well in in the first six rounds and then later he was just ju he would just fade and not do so much you know. yeah it's, because uh, Spinks was Spinks was a decent fighter, but um, I don't think that many thought that uh, he would defeat Zab Judah. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, hey, nothing else to be said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can move on. May 8th, Manny Pacquiao won Matt, well, Manuel Marquez. This was the first fight. Oh. Another coming out party fight for uh, oh, <laughs> Manny Pacquiao. Excellent yeah. matchup. Excellent matchup. It almost became just that, uh, yeah. It was in the first round, yeah. He scored three knockdowns and then and broke his Marquez. nose, broke yeah. uh, one Mar one Manuel Marquez's nose. Yeah, and then, you know, Marquez being the warrior, the GOT he is, he just came back and and yeah. uh, gave it to Pacquiao, <laughs> just took the fight to him and won many rounds. Yeah. yeah. So. I didn't see it live, but I'm sure people that were live who were there or watching it live was probably thinking, oh, this is about to be over after seeing that first round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what it looked like. Like in the second round, it's over. Like, you know? But <laughs> no, I think Marquez, uh, he, he hasn't been stopped, has he? No. So, yeah, um, yeah. And, um, Hey, he showed his bravado in this fight. He showed his uh, medal and uh, won a lot of fans and showed that, hey, he deserved to be in the mix with those, the Eric Moraleses and the uh, and the uh, Marco Antonio Barreros because that, to this point, he was kind of the, the <coughs> outside guy looking in as far as those top Mexican guys. Um, yeah. You had Barrera, you had uh, at least uh, in, in the lower weights uh, or around that featherweight um, um, no, and I'm he's the only, the only Mexican who wasn't really, I mean, uh, beaten down by Pacquiao. I mean, beaten yeah. down to size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And stylistically, he was different than Morales and Marco and yeah. Tokyo Barrera. He was more of the counter puncher, you know? That's um, right. Yeah. And, and okay. that kind of separated him a bit as well. Yeah. A bit more clever and uh, yeah, also very tough like those guys. <laughs> Definitely, and you know, I was thinking about you know when we were talking about trilogies that were uh, pretty good. Yeah, they did. Him and Pacquiao did have some good fights in their run. That uh, each of them, yeah. each of them were uh, all of them were good fight. Hey, maybe that fourth fight was the most dramatic. So that may mm -hmm. be another example to throw in the mix there. <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, then May 15th, 2004, Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones Jr. This was the rematch. And this is mm. where we saw the end of Roy Jones as we knew him. Yeah. He, this was the turning point. <laughs> and this was not just any knockout. This right hand nearly knocked his head off, I guess you could say, yeah. <laughs> hypothetically speaking. That was a perfect timing, perfect, yeah. Perfect yeah. punch. And uh, yeah, and it was a shocker because this was the first time Roy Jones had ever been hurt, if, if I recall. Yeah, and no one else was really able to uh catch yeah. him with anything remotely close to the this type of shot that uh Tarver caught him with. And uh, all that you know, frustration from the first fight, he just oh, yeah. put it all in that one punch, just boom. <laughs> Got any excuses yeah. tonight, Roy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was uh, yeah, funny. Swear. So, yeah, Roy Jones came tumbling down. And at this time, Roy Jones, I believe he was the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And uh, split second like that it was over. Yeah. And as we'll see when we go on, that was the last of, well, I guess when he fought Glenn Johnson, which may pop up as well. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, that one is. Yeah. <laughs> so, 2004 was the last of Roy as we knew him in general. Uh, yeah. But after that fight, uh, the next big one was September 18th, of course, Bernard Hopkins taking on Oscar De La Hoya. And these two guys, yeah. I think this is where they may have become friends or they may have been friends beforehand. As you all know, uh, Bernard Hopkins and, and, and Oscar De La Hoya, they definitely work closely together. He's a part of Golden Boy. Uh, oh. But they took on this fight in... Uh, Hey, Oscar dared to be great. Uh, wanted to try and get a middleweight championship. Uh, and I think you mentioned this may have been at a catch weight, right? Uh, or something like that. Yeah, I think 156 or 
Yeah. Okay. So really closer to a, a light middleweight fight, but I guess yeah. in between ish. But uh, it, was, uh, it was a very competitive fight. Um, oh, but, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, but in the end, you know, the, the size difference, all that showed because Hawkins was just able to land one punch yes. and that was okay. enough. And, uh, and, and uh, De La Hoya's track record, as we would come to see at middleweight, he really didn't do much at middleweight. He was able to yeah. capture a belt again, but I don't think yeah. he deserved to capture that belt. Um, yes, Felix Sturm, yeah, that was yeah. a very, yeah. Controversial for sure. Very, very, I yeah. gotta say, so, so Oscar De La Hoya, I think we can surmise he was not a middleweight. Um, but no. Bernard Hopkins, as we were mentioning earlier, you're not just going to go in there and necessarily outbox him. You're going to have to have something else, like whether that's athletically, your activity. And I think mm. activity helped uh, Kyle Zaghi when he defeated uh, Bernard Hopkins. But but it's going to have to be something. You're just going to have to, for when, when Hopkins took on the likes of, which I know we'll get to, uh, Jermaine Taylor, you know, he was athletically more gifted and, and probably physically more stronger at that yeah. particular time. And he was a big guy, big, a big middleweight. So you needed something like that to defeat, defeat Bernard Hopkins. He wasn't just going to lose yeah. to you based off skill alone. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, he had fought some guys that were, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, some of his best wins were against, uh, guys like Trinidad, De La Hoya, you know, and, uh, yeah. who weren't really, I mean, you couldn't say they were really middleweights, especially De La Hoya, you know. And, yeah. uh, and you know, it, it, and yeah, and it took him a while to get those fights. So uh, Bernard, so he, uh, unlike what you see in terms of some fighters' trajectories, um, he really saw his bigger fights later on in his career where a lot of guys would be past it and yeah. i think style style helped him his style just even uh from yeah. early on that was one way and as i guess that's how he learned especially i guess um when he was initially um starting out but his style was one that allowed him to fight at a, a older age and that's yeah. where he really uh saw or reaped the benefits of a long career mm. I think he got more respect when he uh, became a light heavyweight because he yeah. was then fighting, you know, guys more his own size when he was older, but still able to, you know, beat many of them. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You're right. He did garner some respect uh, with that move. Yeah. Um, so moving September 25th, and, and I know this is going to be a long video. Uh, we're, we're halfway through there. We're almost there, uh, Slavin. We're okay. almost there. But uh, so many good fights to talk about. We can go on forever. Yeah. Maybe uh, we, we should, we can make a second part. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, we can do that. We can stop uh, here. We can let 20, 2004 be the end of uh, part one. Yeah, and then we'll sure. come back to them with 2005 and beyond. Because, yeah, we don't want to hold you, our listeners out there, hostage yeah. for any much longer than we, <laughs> than we probably should here on this uh, beautiful Sunday where it's actually snowing here in Washington, D.C. Oh, you know? nice. Probably not the type of uh, snow you get in Norway, but snow nonetheless. Yeah, then, we yeah. Haven't, haven't been having so much lately, but, uh, yeah, we have enough. Yeah, oh, we yeah. got a few inches that we're getting over this weekend. I think they're talking around six to eight or something like that. Those are some numbers that I heard. Oh, but nice. uh, but but anyway, yeah, the September twenty fifth, two thousand and four. The next big major fight was Roy Jones Jr. for the second fight in a row, getting knocked out. And not only was it him getting knocked out, it was more brutal. Then the knockout that Tarver uh, actually had knocked him out with. So this was Roy Jones taking on Glenn Johnson, Glenn the Road Warrior Johnson for the IBF uh, light heavyweight title. And of course, Glenn Johnson, Road Warrior, he was a fighter who would always go on the road. He would fight you anywhere, anyhow, anytime. 
He was a he was a veteran. He 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 he's one of those throwback fighters in that sense. Um, but you know, uh, Bernard Hopkins was able to uh, stop Glenn Justin actually uh, a little bit earlier on, and uh, Roy Jones uh, fairly easily defeated. Uh, Bernard Hopkins when they fought the first time which was early on for uh, Hopkins who didn't have the same amateur accolades as Roy Jones Mm. really was growing into him so but still Roy Jones uh, dominated Hopkins Hopkins dominated Johnson Styles make fights of course and Roy Jones was brutally stopped in this fight what are your thoughts seeing that one yeah I mean I think because he had taken uh, so much punishment over nine of eight rounds first of course and our fight only went two rounds i think that's why uh oh yeah that uh, knockout was so i mean more damaging to jones and uh simply uh so jones did try of course to <laughs> to uh put us some kind of an effort but he was simply already damaged you know and Johnson was the better guy uh, through throughout the fight, I guess. And, yeah. And, uh, and if you thought the uh, Tarver fight with Jones getting knocked out, well, knocked out for the first time was a one-off, then this fight really told you that hey, something is going on, Roy. Yeah. You're you're not the same fighter. Uh, yeah. Because he surely he surely <laughs> would have. Uh, that is best dominated Glenn Johnson. So this is definitely should have been ringing alarm bells. Definitely. I don't think Johnson, uh, against the prime Jones would have come near to pulling off such a uh, victory. So he was always a good fighter, but never, I think he himself said that he's not the best. So he just wants to fight the best. So yeah, he, he yeah he was just one of those guys who uh, hey he was gonna show up he was gonna uh, give it his all and yeah. more often times than not he uh, he got the W but he also took some took a lot of L's in in, in his uh, path there but hey he got some wins over uh, some some pretty good fighters uh, in his career he was yeah. like hey the Road Warrior moniker was true for him he, he was just like yeah. a wily veteran who would have been competitive in any era, so I would say one of those guys. Yeah, he was very good. It's just that Jones and those guys were so great, uh, yeah. So, yeah, and I'm sure that uh, Jones's name will pop back up, but not in the light and fashion that it probably would have uh, been accustomed to it being mentioned where it was the 1990s. Uh, mm. So... We'll move on to November 20th, where it was a rematch between Winky Wright and Shane Mosley. And once again, uh, Shane Mosley bit out, had bit out, bitten off more than he could chew. 154 wasn't his weight, definitely at that particular time, against yeah. Winky Wright, who was on the top of his game in his prime and was going to be a hard fighter defeat to defeat for anyone for the most part. So there was a rematch there. That was just a bad, bad uh, call on Mosley's part to take the rematch. Yes, it was the ego, you know, the wounded ego. And he thought, oh, maybe I can do better and maybe I can beat him this time. But he was simply ignoring the facts, you know, uh, yeah, I think he was all wrong for him for several reasons. And, Definitely. Uh, yeah, he was even supposed to fight another guy I read about Mosley, and would have been better for him. That guy who was called uh, <clears throat> Travis Sims. Yeah, that's right. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, yeah that. that would have been a much better fight. I mean, for Mosley and in general. Did he, did he have at one fifty four? Yeah. Did, did he have a title? Or yeah, he did, he did have a title actually, he, <clears throat> but he was like mostly was a super champion, and since was the uh okay, yeah, yeah I don't recall him. Yeah, I had to look back, but yeah, uh, so yeah, you're right. Um, <coughs> yeah, mostly, uh, yeah, we can write, man, he's just uh, such a good fighter, and he's a bigger yeah. guy, of course, and tough, tougher 
many guys to deal with. I remember his name yeah. being, uh, you know, thrown in there with uh, Floyd yes. Mayweather. They were talking about. So these guys who, uh, and this is, uh, I guess the catch weights have been going on, but some of these guys were, you know, fighting light middleweight catch weight fights and things of that nature. Yeah. But um, no one, but, but yeah, some of these guys coming up, <laughs> Winky Wright was not the type of fighter that you want to just, go face to try and take a title at uh, 154 pounds, yeah. especially with there not being a catch weight. Mm, definitely. You avoid it for sure. Yeah, he was just too clever, too, yeah, too Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. And, and stylistically, yeah, you weren't going to be able to get off much on him with that peekaboo defense of his. Yeah, uh, the defense was, yeah, impenetrable. Pretty amazing fighter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then lastly, uh, before we uh, cut off this part one, yeah, uh, the last big fight was uh, Glenn Johnson taking on Antonio Tarver, defeating him uh, via split decision on December eighteenth, two thousand and four, and how we were talking with Tarver, where he would have he, he because Tarver is better than Glenn Johnson if you if you look at the yeah from, from a skill set standpoint but mm. tarver would sometimes find himself uh solely relying on that left hand or at least looking for an opening to land that left hand that i felt he would give away rounds at time and yeah. uh this could be considered the case uh in when he faced glenn johnson where he lost uh via split decision mm. well, i saw this fight once of several years ago and I actually thought maybe Tara deserved to win it. Okay. So we could, but of course it was close. Yeah, definitely. But I thought Tara maybe won like seven rounds or something. Okay. Like and but of course I could see why someone would give it to Johnston because he was the more active of the two. And, yeah, yeah, certainly. It, yeah. It, yeah, that kind of uh, was one of the things mm. that played Tarver. So, a little bit later. Not that he was doing anything special, Johnson. It's just, you know, as you yeah. said, Tarver could sometimes take some breaks and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And this was the case here. And uh, Tarver's name's going to certainly come up again. And you'll see that. Definitely. He <laughs> lost. Uh, yeah. Any, and, and no one really, uh, you know, you, you know, Tarver wasn't a guy you're just going to go and blast through or anything. So it really came down to some boxers. And I think that activity piece uh, when it came to Tarver, especially uh, at the latter end of the fights, but he was a, definitely an excellent fighter. So, uh, but yeah, this was uh, the last big one of uh, 2018 or 2004. And for Glenn Johnson, it was probably like, the highlight, that two fight run right there, the highlight of his career, yeah. defeating uh, Roy Jones and then Antonio Tarver, the guy who defeated Roy Jones uh, for, the, for the first time, definitively at least. Um, so it was the highlight of his career for sure. He was the fighter of the year also, if I'm... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can see that being the case then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, that's two, uh, you knocked off the two top dogs, two of the top dogs that year too. Yeah. Deservedly so. Um but yeah, so yeah, thanks, Slavin. So okay, I guess we'll stop it there. We we could yeah. go on, folks, but we're gonna uh, give you yeah. a little slight reprieve. We're gonna come back with a uh, part two, without a doubt. So be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned. Yeah. Got some more uh, juicy fights to talk about. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So thank you, folks. Yeah. <laughs>